What's going on guys? So we have an interesting video for you today and this is to kind of resolve a bit of an issue that my uh, my brand new 2023 GMC Denali pickup truck is having and that is uh, popping from the back. It's making kind of a weird kind of a popping rattling sound or clunking sound whenever I'm driving slowly, going around turns, things like that. And a lot of folks in the comment sections of the videos that I talked about this posted a solution to it. So it was interesting because I was going to take it to the dealership and you know, Lord, knows how long they would have had it there um, and they kind of claimed that it could have been the rear axle shifting side to side it could be the rear leaf spring pack and they said you know if you bring it in leave with us we can take a look at it uh, I didn't really want to go through that even though I still may end up going through that if this doesn't work anyways in the comment section of the video some folks mentioned a solution that's sitting on the back of my uh, tailgate right here so we're going to talk about those and uh, see if they work hang tight I'll be right back Okay, so there's a product that is on the market that looks identical to these that is designed to eliminate that sound, that popping sound. It's essentially a rubber bushing that fits between the top two leafs, and it, I guess, helps with the binding process. It kind of eliminates that. Uh, these were actually sent to me by a viewer who made his own. Um, he essentially used quarter-inch thick rubber with some holes on the end. He had reached out to me and said, I'll send you some. I made them. They're super cheap to make, a lot cheaper than buying the product. Um, I think the product's like 45, 50 bucks, something like that. You know what? But that product is the reason why these exist. So I'll put a link to that product in the description of this video in case you're interested in buying them. But this is essentially kind of a knockoff of them. Again, quarter inch thick rubber with some holes on the end where zip ties are gonna go through and I have my own zip ties. So we'll see if these work, uh, hopefully they do. If they don't work, then I might actually go buy the ones that are specifically designed for this. But yeah, I had a viewer who actually made these for me and sent them to me. So very, very cool, we're gonna throw them on. The first step I need to do is to lift the suspension off the ground so I don't essentially have any, any tension on the springs. I don't have pressure on the springs so I can space them accordingly so I can fit those in between the top two leaves. So. If I lift up from the differential, unfortunately, it's not going to do anything to the suspension. I need the suspension to completely drop down. And I'm going to do something a little sketchy, but it should work out just fine, I hope. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to put a jack underneath the B&W hitch that's back here. Uh, this thing's rated for like 10,000 pounds, and this truck certainly doesn't weigh 10,000 pounds in the back. We're going to chalk the front tires first. We're going to lift it up and see if we can get the back tires slightly off the ground in the air so we can spread apart the leaf springs and put these bushings in place. So I have my 7,000 pound Husky scissor jack. And yeah, this thing is super, super heavy duty. We actually have used this to lift up the fifth wheel before. Uh, this is not your traditional stabilization jack. So this thing is absolutely far, far heavier duty than what you might typically see. But we're gonna use that right underneath the B&W hitch and see how good of a job this does. All right, don't know if the tires are off the ground, but they're darn close to it. We may have the pressure off of the leaf springs enough to see if we can actually start separating the leaf pack, but let's see how this works. Okay, so we have plenty of, uh, of tension off of them right now. I have a pry bar right here, and you can see when I pull on the pry bar, it creates some space right there, and that's what I'm gonna slide this into, and hopefully that'll fix the problem. We're gonna do it on the front and back of all the leaf springs, and. Uh, and see if it fixes the issue. Okay, so that was actually really easy to get it in there, but yeah, you definitely wanna take the tension off of the springs in order to do it, and you wanna allow them to decompress. We're gonna run a zip tie through here, tighten it up, and then knock out the other, uh, the other three corners and see if that fixes a problem. Okay, so we have the zip tie in place. Everything is really tight. We're gonna go ahead and knock out the other ends of the leaf springs. We'll come back so we can do some uh, drive testing. Okay, so we have all of them done. We can lower this back down. You can kind of see them placed on all the uh, leaf springs front and back. Let's get the truck lowered down and hopefully this fixes the problem so I don't have to send my truck into the shop and leave it there even though it's under warranty.
Okay, so now all four ends are padded. Man, it really expands that gap out a lot when you put that bushing in there. We're gonna take the truck for a quick spin. And we're gonna see if it eliminates the sound that we've been hearing. Okay, so I am super hopeful that the sound has gone away. I really am. And the way we will find out is by just simply going around this little loop right here. Okay, let's see what happens. I think the sound's gone. I don't hear it at all. Let's expand this drive a little bit. I kind of regret wearing a coat that makes a lot of noise anytime it moves, but. So far, not hearing anything. little bit more maneuvering here you may hear a little rattling in the back seat that is the uh, child seat I have back there I think it is gone a good example of being at an angle. It's gone! Problem has been solved. Uh, hopefully they last. Hopefully I don't have any issues with them wearing out prematurely, but they appear to have fixed the problem. And um, yeah, I definitely want to give a big thank you to the subscriber who uh, wanted to remain anonymous, who sent me the little rubber pads that were essentially the same thing that he was able to find online. Um, again, I will put a link to the actual product in the description of this video only because, uh, you know, they designed it. They came up with the solution and it works, obviously. So, um, you know, if you guys want to purchase it, yeah, you can definitely check it out. I forgot what the name of it is, but I will throw a link in the description if it's something you may want to add to your truck if you're getting a similar noise. Very, very cool. Again, only time will tell how long they're going to last and under what conditions, you know, they wear out. But, um... I'm imagining, and I could be wrong, but the official product might hold up a little better. I, I don't know. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they do. But this, for me, has fixed my problem. Essentially, the uh, that clunking noise that I was getting when I would just make little maneuvers like this. It would give me a clunking noise, and it was very annoying. And this saved me the time of having to take it to a dealership, having to get them to repair it, and simply... You know, lifting the back of the truck up, taking some of the tension off of the springs, and placing these little pads in between the ends of the top two leaf springs at the very end and zip-tying them in place. So very cool. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. I'm very happy that the problem has been resolved because it was actually bothering me. Uh, it was really the only issue I've had with the truck, honestly, uh, besides, again, the firm seats, which aren't as bad as they used to be. They've actually worn in a little bit on me. I don't think they're any less firm. I think I'm adapting to them a little bit more than I did. Um, I'm going to do a video pretty soon kind of talking about over dash visibility because one thing I have absolutely noticed about this truck is when I pull up to a parking area or I pull up in front of a gas station or whatnot, um, I think I'm a lot closer than I really am. I get out and I look around the front. I'm like, wow, I still got like five feet of space in front of me. Um, and I can get much closer in my truck, I can get much closer in my wife's Expedition, and I can get much closer in some other vehicles. So what I may end up doing, and let me show you here, I may end up doing a video from the cab of both my wife's Expedition, which is very similar to an F-150, and this truck, just showing you what visibility you have over the hood, because the hood on this truck is very, very steep, and that steep hood 
really makes it a little difficult to see over the front of it. And uh, I'd like to see just how difficult it is compared to perhaps the uh, the Expedition and maybe even my F450 because I do feel like I can see far better over the hood of my F450 than I can in this truck. But really the only three gripes I can think of regarding this truck would be seat comfort, which again is getting a little better. It's kind of interesting. It's actually, again, I'm getting used to it, I guess. The uh, visibility over the hood and the back suspension. And we fixed the back suspension. Um, it was a lot quicker than taking it to the dealership. So for those of you who are like, you should take it to the dealership, um, no, this was a lot, lot quicker for me. And I was able to make a cool informed video seeing if it actually fixed the problem. So that's really cool. But yeah, besides that, the truck's actually been a phenomenal truck. I haven't had any issues with it. Still getting remarkable fuel economy. And I'll constantly be giving you guys updates on how this truck is performing for us. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.